in this video we will talk about the concept of inheritance in java so inheritance is basically an oops concept object oriented programming concept that allows a class to extend or inherit another class it is about basing an object upon another object so we take a class and this class extends another class so basically the class that is inheriting or extending the behavior of another class is called child or a subtype or a subclass so there are various names and they all have the same meaning similarly the class which is basically the another class this is called the parent or the super type or the super class so in simple terms in inheritance a child or a sub type or a sub class inherits data and behavior from parent or super type or super class all right so why do we use inheritance inheritance basically uh, solves many problems in object oriented programming when we are designing our system and when we are trying to uh, code the system basically when we are trying to find the entities of the problem domain and how do we represent them to a java class or to a java object so that kind of problems are easily solved using inheritance certain use cases it allows code reuse so that we don't have to write the same thing again and again because a child in inheritance a child has a choice to override the parent where applicable so that helps uh, that gives us a flexibility to uh, avoid the code du duplication we can only write we can only override the behavior that we need in a child we will see things in more detail when we talk about a sample class hierarchy a sample inheritance hierarchy probably in the next video for now uh, Uh, for now it is sufficient to know that in inheritance a class inherits another class the child inherits parent same as in the real world so when we have two classes how do we uh, how do we write the code in java that a class is inheriting another class so let's say we have a class which is basically child because child inherits so we have a child class and the keyword that we use in java is extends and then the parent class so when we define a class in java we write something like this public class let's say the name of child is my class extends parent now the body could be anything similarly this name could be anything and it could be a valid parent or an existing class in the system but this is how uh, we write the inheritance code in java using extends keyword next we will talk about the order of uh, the constructor execution in inheritance so for example we have the class parent and the parent would have a constructor same as any other class whether it is default or a parameterized one then we will have a child class which is extending parent similarly child will we would have its own constructor it could be default again or it could be some custom parameterized constructor but the thing is whenever we have uh, a setup something like this and when we try to initialize the child so let's say we are creating a new object of child class new child here what will happen while instantiating the child while creating a new object for child class we see that here we are calling the default or the no argument constructor of child class so the jvm will call this constructor but before this constructor can completes can complete its execution jvm will call the 
parent constructor. Now whatever is written over here it will be completed first then the control will come back to the child and the code of child constructor will execute then then only we will have a new object of uh, ch uh, child class. So the order of execution in case of inheritance is always parent constructor then child constructor so parent executes first then child and that's how we create a new object of any child class in java so we need to remember this order of execution because it will be critical we will see uh, some examples of this in uh, future lessons but for now remember that this order of execution matters similarly there is another keyword super so let's say in child if we have to access uh, a behavior a particular method of parent class then we can use super keyword we can say something like super dot m in child so that means when jvm executes this particular line jvm will know that okay we are asking jvm to call method m of parent so that's why super is used super is an indication uh, to jvm that please call method m of super which is basically parent of this class all right so we need to remember super keyword as well it will be clear in future lessons but uh, for now we are just introducing some keywords related to inheritance so just to recap uh, we learned what is inheritance in general then how do we uh, how do we tell in a java code that a class is inheriting another class we do that via extends keyword then we talked about uh, the order of execution that first the parent constructor gets called then only the child constructor gets a chance to execute itself and once both the constructors are finished then only we have a working object of child then there is something called super keyword that is used to invoke operations on the parent not on the child but on the parent so we write something like super dot method name in order to invoke the uh, parents version of method so that's it for now uh, we will continue our discussion on inheritance in future lessons so in this video we will talk about a sample hierarchy sample class hierarchy and uh, how inheritance solves certain kind of problems so here we let's say for example here we have a class message sender so this is the class message sender and it has two methods send to send a message and uh, the format message to basically uh, create the uh, message that it has to send so i've named it format message so it will just simply format the message in order to send it to a sender now assume that the format message send is sending some message to send to some sender it uh, we don't really care about the implementation of send what we need to focus on is the implementation of format message so let's say the default implementation of sorry so let's say the default implementation of format message is basically to handle the plain text message so the default implementation handles the formatting of plain text message so if there is a plain text message then uh, it the message sender would call format message to format the message to create the message and then to uh, it will call the send message send method to send that message now let's say we created this class and it is up and running in the system we release the code now after releasing the code after few months there is a requirement to support the multimedia messages as well till now it was able to handle plain text but now the requirement is to support multimedia messages as well so we need to be able to format 
and send multimedia messages so what are the options here let's discuss them so the first and simple option could be to put something like if else in the message sender class so in the format message this is the option number one so we modified the format message we placed an if else that if the type is for example text then execute the default logic that we shipped already and if the type is multimedia then we write something new to handle the multimedia message now think about the problem here a we are changing the already tested code and b we are uh, actually changing the format message it used to be simple but now it is a bit complicated consider the scenario let's say in future there is another requirement to handle the video messages then there will be another else if in the same message and as as long as there are new message types then we will like continue to add new if else in the format message which will basically make the message complicated the code it, the code will be too complicated to understand to test and uh, to maintain for uh, the person who wrote the code and for the future developers of the same class so that is the problem with this approach it is simple just placing an if else would solve the problem for now but from future perspective it is making the code a bit difficult to understand and maintain what could be the other option so the other option could be to duplicate the class we create a duplicate class and we name it let's say multimedia sender so we copy the send um, message from here basically we copy the implementation and then we 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 are not copying the exact implementation but we are writing the format message to handle the multimedia uh, multimedia message but we duplicated the implementation of send method from the message sender now again let's say there is a requirement to support different message types that means we will have to create duplicate copies of the same class with uh, probably duplicate implementations of send method and with their own implementations of format message and if for example there is a bug in the send method then we'll have to fix it everywhere in all message types so let's say if we have 10 or 15 message types then we will have to fix the same bug everywhere so this is an overhead from maintenance perspective how do we solve this kind of problem using inheritance so we said that uh, it allows a child or a subtype or a subclass to inherit the behavior of a super type or parent or super class so if we opt to implement uh, inheritance in this use case then we could have something like this so we still have the message sender class and it has send method and format message method but instead of placing the if else or instead of creating dupli duplicate uh, classes let's say to handle the multimedia sender we created a new class but this time we are inheriting from the message sender so we only wrote format message in the multimedia sender the send method in the blue is being is being uh, is actually coming from the parent so blue means we did not write the implementation of send method it's not duplicated but it is as if it is present in the child but in reality it is coming from the parent class message sender similarly if there is a requirement to support uh, email sender so for example in this case the requirement is that you have to send the plain text message via email protocol so in this case we don't need to override format message because we still are processing text messages so in this case we will not write the implementation of format message that is why this is shown in blue it will pick the implementation from the parent but we will simply override the send method so we only give the implementation of send in the email sender class and yet another example let's say there is another requirement to support video sender and in this case 
assume that uh, send will have a different different implementation and format will also have a different implementation so this but in this particular case the video sender the new class will have its own version of send and format message but it is still inheriting from the video sender and we will see what is the purpose and the benefit of uh, this uh, inheritance in code uh, how does it avoid the code duplication but for now i guess it gives us uh, a bit of clarity how inheritance can solve certain set of problems in object oriented domain all right so we will see uh, we will cover few more uh, details on the inheritance in the next lesson that's it for now thank you so in this video we will spend some more time on the inheritance hierarchy in the last video we saw the example of message sender then we saw how we created an inheritance hierarchy using different classes for to handle different kind of messages multimedia sender to handle uh, the multimedia message email sender to have a customized implementation of send message via email protocols and then the video sender uh, basically which has its own implementation for both the messages send and format message so it is simplifying the problem inheritance is simplifying the problem and it is a way uh, to avoid code duplication but does that mean that any class can inherit any class in the java universe or in the universe of your project just because let's say we we want to avoid the implementation of send does that mean any class that has a similar functionality should override or should inherit from message sender so there is something called is a relationship is a relationship so it says that whenever we are thinking in terms of inheritance when whenever we are uh, thinking that we should create a class and we should inherit from a parent then we should apply this is a test and if your relationship passes the is a test then we should add the new class in the inheritance hierarchy otherwise we should drop it so in terms of inheritance this arrow represents that video sender class is inheriting or it extends the message sender class so it means that video sender is a message sender it is a type of message sender similarly email sender is a message sender and multimedia sender is also a message sender so in this case all three classes are passing the is a test is a relationship because the child is a parent not exactly because it is overriding something but is a kind of parent is a type of parent so that is what is a relationship represents in terms of inheritance so let's say we have a new requirement to print the message right to print the message in order to print the message we have to uh, format the text so that we can print it so let's say we are writing a new class print and we have to uh, format the text the text that we are printing now coincidentally let's say the implementation of format text and the format message is similar not exactly same but similar and we thought why not uh, why not uh, add this print class to the existing hierarchy so that we don't have to write the format message code sorry format text code why not reuse the format message but the thing is let's call it printer here we should apply the is a test so we should ask is printer passing the is a relationship can we say that printer is a message sender if yes then only we should add this class to the inheritance hierarchy then only we should say that okay we will inherit from the message sender class but 
the common sense says that printer is not a message sender printer is a different entity it doesn't belong to this inheritance tree this inheritance hierarchy right so this is this is not passing the is a relationship so we should not inherit from the message sender class so we the bottom line is when we are going with inheritance we add a child to the hierarchy only if it is passing the is a relationship otherwise we will have a very complicated inheritance hierarchy even difficult to maintain this is an anti pattern which should not be followed so always uh, try to uh, apply the is a relationship the classes uh, which pass the is a relationship only they should belong to the same inheritance hierarchy we cannot blindly add any class to the inheritance hierarchy just to avoid the code duplication and just to achieve the code reuse it will just complicate the whole design all right so that's it for now and we will see few more details on the inheritance in the next video Thank so you. in this video we will see how exactly we use inheritance in the java code so here we have two classes the one the first class is parent which has a simple method m which is printing a some message on the console parent then we have the child class notice the keyword extend which means that this child is extending from the parent class and uh, the child has one method but the name is different it has method m1 which has its own uh, print ln statement to print child and then m1 on the console so if we have these two classes if we are using inheritance then how do we initialize our objects how do we like write our code to create a new object of parent or child so there are certain possibilities and we will go one by one so for example we are simply creating an instance of parent an object of parent so we can do something like parent p equals to new parent and here we can call p dot m this is perfectly fine if we do this jvm will print parent on the console because we are calling m method on the reference variable p which is basically pointing to the parent object right then we have another possibility we can say child c equals to new child and now it gets interesting because if we do this we can call c dot m1 because we know that child has the method m1 but we can also call c dot m we know that uh, child does not have m method because we don't see anything here but because of the extends keyword because of the inheritance c or the child is inheriting this particular method from the parent so we can call method m it will simply call the parents method m and it will again print the parent on the console so that is the benefit of inheritance we did not write the implementation of method m in the child but still because child is inheriting from the parent we have the access to the method that is in the parent along with any method that we uh, wrote directly in the child class then there is one third version so we can also say something like parent child object equals to new child so here if we notice the left hand side is referring to the parent which is the parent class then name of the reference variable but on the right hand side we are actually creating the object of child so this is one major difference on the left we see the parent subtype but on the right we are saying that create the object of child it is perfectly valid but what is allowed on the child object reference variable we can we call m yes 
it will simply print the parent on the console but we cannot call m1 this is not allowed it will be a compile time error although on the right hand side we are saying to create the object of child but we are not allowed to call the method m1 why is it because in general when we talk about the super type and sub type we need to follow this rule so in general new sub type we can initialize an object in this manner so the left hand side the reference variable can be of super type so it could be parent on the right hand side we can create the object of child or sub subtype which is also valid but when we call methods on the reference variable and let's name it any method then there is a restriction we can call any method as long as it's there in the super type so the method that we can invoke is decided by the reference variable on the left hand side so that's why here we cannot call m1 because the left hand child reference variable is referring to the parent and parent does not have any uh, method with name m1 it has a method m so that's why here we couldn't call m1 so again any method that can be invoked on the reference variable if we are instantiating an object in this manner is decided by the reference that is being pointed by the left hand side or the super type this is the rule number 1 now let's go back to the same hierarchy let's say that yes we got the in child we have the access to method m here we have the access to method m we can call the method m on the child reference that is perfectly fine but if we run this code it prints uh, parent on the console we don't want to do that we want that in child class whenever we are calling c dot m it should uh, actually print some other message on the console so what we can do we can override so inheritance allows two things a we can inherit a member or a method from the parent so that we don't have to give our own implementation and then it gives the flexibility to override the functionality so if we want to give our own implementation then we can override the same method so in this case we will override the method m so we will talk about the overriding rules um, in some other video but for now let's assume we need to give the exact uh, method signature basically the name and the number of arguments and everything must be the same only the implementation can be different so here we changed the implementation to let's say child to print the child on the console now let's go back to the uh, this rule that we discussed where the left hand side reference is pointing to the super type and right in the right hand side we are creating the object of the child so again we do something like this parent new object equals to new child but this time if we call the new object dot m due to the inheritance it will not call the parent version but it knows from the right hand side that actual object is of child class so it needs to call the overridden version so the jvm will go to the child class and it will check do we have a method m a custom implementation of method m in the child and it saw that yes we have so it knows that it has to call the overridden version so on the console we will see child so in short which method can be invoked is decided by the uh, left hand side reference but which method will actually be called is decided by the actual object 
that is on the right hand side it will become more clear when we uh, go to the code examples but for now uh, we just need to understand uh, this important bit all right so that's it for now thank you